Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides can never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sili amri wa hlul uqbatan min lisani yafqo qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots of my tongue so that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah. Glory be to you in that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the Almighty. Again, Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuhu and Jumma Mubarak to each and every one of you. I pray that each of you all are doing well and your families are doing well uh, in this space as we go into the blessed day. Uh, of Juma and in, in, and in this blessed space, and one thing that we want to lift up in 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 our in our time together today is a moment of solitude, the value of a moment of solitude, particularly from our tradition, particularly from uh, the Islamic uh, foundations, the Islamic tradition of what value is there in taking a moment of solitude. You know, we're we're living in a day and an age where. Uh, we may be hyper connected in so many different ways. We're we're never really disconnected um, from you know really anything. Even if if we take a time time for ourselves, or we take time for self care and whatnot, how often is it that we do so with our devices or with our phones or something like with our watch? And we're still connected in a way to the outside world. We're still getting distracted in in, in different ways. And and just thinking about that it's kind of becoming more and more of a lost art uh, of, of being able for us to take moments and periods and times for solitude versus on the other hand, where it's also been a parallel time where it's been an increasing period of isolation, it's been an increasing period of um, people uh, feeling not just, not just having this anxiety, not just being uh, boxed out, but really feeling um, spa spaces and states of desperation, of isolation, uh, of being in the periphery, being on the margins. Uh, and so there's, there's this parallel aspect where on one hand, we're kind of losing uh, this element of taking true meaningful times to be with ourselves, to be alone, to be in solitude but at the same time uh, at, a, at, a, at a day and age where despite being hyper-connected, despite being uh, having all these different utilities and tools where you have you know friends and networks and things like that the disconnection and the isolation um, and the separation that's being experienced and felt uh, is is uh, is at a uh, an all-time high and so what what value is there for us when we try and reconceptualize trying to think about what is a moment of solitude why should we think about taking these moments of solitude what do they have to offer what, what does a time away from being in the know, being connected, being all embedded in everything that's going on, what does that have to offer us? You know, Ali ibn Abi Talib had said that you know, contemplation and reflection invites a person towards good and also towards the performance of that good. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz had shared that when you remember Allah verbally, that's good. It's good to verbally remember Allah. But when you contemplate, about the blessings of Allah. That is the best act of worship. Our Prophet ﷺ had told us that, do you know that contemplation are, and, and patience are from Allah and hastiness and impetuosity and, and, and just 
hastily wanting to get something done, doing something without giving it proper thought, without being able to sit with it for a bit, that's from shaitan. And our Prophet Sallallahu has shared with us that those who are in seclusion, they have raced ahead. And when asked about, you know, who, who are those in seclusion, Prophet Sallallahu responded that those are the people, the men and women who remember Allah often. And so thinking about when we're talking about this aspect of contemplation, we're talking about this aspect of solitude, we're disconnecting from the world around, disconnecting from uh, the distractions, the things that are there. But in fact, it is in and of itself an act of reconnection. That's similar to when you are exercising, when you are dieting, it's not just about what you are ingesting, what you are taking in, what you are doing, what late, what weights are you lifting, what are you consuming, what are you doing, all that, but also what are you leaving off? What are the things that are maybe harmful for you and for your diet or for your physical health that you are abstaining from, but at the same time, by abstaining from it, you are actually doing your body, you're actually doing yourself uh, a load of good because of just not partaking in that. So again, as I mentioned, you know, we are in despite being in a uh, in, in in this in this space you know we're we're in this connected world we're never maybe really from a superficial standpoint ever truly alone and you know our our devices our social medias our jobs our uh, all this different stuff that we have uh, they they you know we they they're connecting us in so many different ways that we may never feel like all right we've got all these different things going on but they never really hit a little bit deeper sometimes that that make us feel like we're we're, we're still maybe alone in a bit, we're still isolated, but they never, for our purposes here, when we think about, do they ever give us time to really think, time to really reflect, time to really even engage in our own worship, or just even be present with ourselves? that thinking about how, you know, when we, when we're so connected to all these different things, it's, it's, it is a great thing to be able to access our relatives, our loved ones, and uh, all these different things in a way that uh, was not afforded to those who came before us, but to the point to where now these things start to consume our space. How often do we see and read and maybe even ourselves experience just the drag of being able to go through social media and just that endless scrolling, the mindless kind of scrolling that kind of happens, um, or the clickbait that's there, or any of this other aspect of just getting consumed within our work, within uh, our, our own devices, our own spaces, and yet not being able to spend that time truly with ourselves, We may say like, hey, we want to take a time for some self-care and some some moments here, but how often do those practices of ours become something like, uh, you know, being able to just become consumed in our own, in our own world, in our own devices, in our own space, and not be able to do something of benefit for us. It's like, we have a bad day, and that one day we're like, you know what, I'm going to pull out a pint of ice cream from the, 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 the freezer, and I'm just going to eat that ice cream um, nobody's going to say anything. All right. You know what? You might've had that ice cream. You might've had that. You might've had a bad day and you have it there, but it, when that becomes your default coping mechanism, it's going to have harmful effects. You know, that one time you did it, you had a bad day. All right, cool. You know, you can excuse it. Um, and it's there, but when that starts to become part and parcel of your routine, you can see how its effects will become quite detrimental. But when we think about the essence of like, hey, like, you know, I was working this like really crazy job, I was doing all this different stuff, and I was just exhausted, or I had a really bad day. Uh, and that was the first time I actually had taken some time for myself, I might have not been doing the most healthiest thing, I might have been eating this pint of ice cream, but I could actually uh, take the essence of it that I had took some time for myself. So what's something else I can do that's much more meaningful? And thinking about within our context that what is a moment of solitude offer us what is its value within our faith that when we make time to be alone and spend time in a way that is pleasing to Allah it's an integral part of not just purifying our soul but an integral part of helping us truly reconnect that we disconnect to reconnect and it's actually very interesting that as we'll talk about that in solitude in in time when we take intentional time for ourselves not not necessarily by environmental factors, but by our own agency, that when we take our time alone by ourselves, that's a space that we cultivate and we uh, we enjoy some of the most creative parts of ourselves. that our creativity is fostered, that our problem solving enhances, that we, we start to think and reflect and have a deeper understanding and, and, and are able to improve that functionality within ourselves 
um, but also we're able to just benefit from having that time alone. We see some of the psychological studies that come out about uh, how we become conditioned to respond uh, to notifications, to different things like that, uh, and how it affects our, own, affects our own regulation, how it affects our own emotions and our own men uh, mental well-being. Um, so it's, it's, it's inter then therefore integral for us. And when we think about solitude, it's crucial, not just for our spirituality, but for us, you know, as, as, as working human beings, as functioning human beings in every aspect of our life to be able to incorporate that. So it's not just a spiritual practice, but it's something that has a tremendous impact uh, for us in any aspect of life. We think about within our tradition that some of those most, uh, the, those kind of uh, peak moments, those, those special, uh, you know, flashpoint moments of the connection of the divine uh, with our space, with our with our reality, with the world, happen in moments of isolation. Our Prophet Sallallahu received his first revelation in not just a cave by himself, but he had already been, you know, there for a few days. He had already been going there for months. He had already been taking some time to isolate himself, to distance himself, to have some space from his society, from the noise that was there to contemplate, to reflect, to just kind of make some meaning of it. He may have had so many different things going through his mind. He needed to take that time to kind of sort through all of this different stuff. And whether it's uh, the problems that were pertaining to his community, whether it was his own spiritual dilemma, whether whatever it might have been, but spending that time alone to think deeply, to worship, to be able to just reflect in that space shows that it's a uh, it was a sunnah of the Prophet It was a practice of the Prophet to incorporate that and and thinking about how much for us in this particular day and age has that become a lost concept because we 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 don't see the value in it as much as we do in so many other aspects or other practices or other uh, spaces of worship and rituals of worship. But being able to think about uh, what we're going through in life, what we're trying to make sense of what we're just trying to navigate and oftentimes looking at all these different solutions reading all these self-help books looking at all this different stuff it's great but how much are we trying to figure out an issue that uh, the solution of which may lie within and the solution of which may allow for uh, may ask for us to take some time away uh, there's certain points where if you're injured or you have like a wound or something um, you know, there's there, at, some, at certain points, you know, you can do as much as you can to get the medications, to get the ointments, do whatever you can. But another point, you know, that 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 wound is going to scab over. That that wound is going to heal on its own, and time is what's going to heal it. It's it, giving it its own space for a little bit. It's going to heal it. You touching it and, and and messing with it may just continue to interrupt it, its natural healing process. And thinking about what is it when we leave, give ourselves a little bit of that time to set ourselves apart in that space so thinking about though solitude is a practice having moments of solitude um are, are built into our religion they're built into our our deen when we think about what are our prayers like what are uh what is the time that we spend with our creator uh in worship what are those like are they off oftentimes with other people are they in community which has tremendous benefits but within them, do they have those moments of us being able to really find that deep connection? And we oftentimes maybe feel this when you go to the mosque or you go in any space and you might be praying uh, with the congregation. You might be there and you look to your right or you look to the left and, and, and the brother or sister next to you is just like bawling, you know, just weeping uh, in, 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 in their in their ibadah and their worship. And you're just like, it's just, well, what's wrong with them? Like, I'm just kind of, I, I just, I'm just doing it here, but hopefully they're all right. But thinking about in that space, how we are able to try and cultivate even that solitude in wider spaces, in meaningful places, in places that uh, is by design intended for us to try and cultivate that, uh, that sense of us being there just on our own, uh, one with our creator in terms of being uh, present in that space. But thinking about that those solitude is built into our faith and has deep roots that we can continue to cultivate and, and find and, and discover, that Islam also warns us against the aspect of complete isolation. So to completely withdraw, to be able to just disconnect from your particular obligations, from your loved ones, from these different things, 
uh, there's, there's always a fine balance. And so your moments of solitude that we take, uh, you know, they, they first and foremost should be of a benefit for you. They should be uh, of you establishing a deeper connection, something of, of, of a positive space, but they shouldn't be at that expense where they uh, lead to neglect or harm or anything like that. And so uh, we must seek in our aspects of solitude that these are not just ones that completely isolate ourselves that we are of completely shut off from everything around us, um, that we are not uh, in any way, shape, or form still having some form of connection to our loved ones, to those who may depend on us, uh, that there is a balance we can find uh, between making that time to sit alone, to be alone, to worship Allah alone, to reflect alone, but also the time to serve those who may need it, serve our community, be there for our family when they need it that complete isolation is not what humans were built for. Humans were not built for complete isolation. And we can see the, uh, the, the detrimental effects that it has on a person's well-being when you see someone being put into solitary confinement or you see uh, certain types of imprisonment uh, and detention that completely uh, have, uh, are, are, are kind of underlined by this sensory deprivation that uh, lead to very catastrophic results that it de 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 it, it uh, deprives us from you know having the the basic essence and benefit of our ummah of our community of being a faith that balances that which is our solitude which is our individual obligations which is uh, our personal experience with that which is also our communal obligations so thinking in this aspect that our prophet sallam has lifted up a believer who mixes with the people and is patient with the people and patient with their harm and the, the, the difficulty, the baggage that they bring and being able to navigate that, but being patient with it has a greater reward than the believer who does not mix with the people, who chooses to not mix with them and is not patient with the difficulties that they bring or the harm that, might, that they might bring. That uh, this is a, uh, a, a religion that not only is uh, emphasizing making a priority to make time for oneself make time for oneself and one's creator and just cultivating that space, but also being an active contributor to their society, to their communities, to the space around them in the way that they are able. And that, that solitude, it shouldn't interfere with one's basic obligations towards their families or to their communal duties or to their basic responsibilities. Rather, the moments of solitude we take should actually supplement and enhance our time in community they should enhance our time as family members as husbands as wives as children as uh you know as, as as parents as all these different things our moments of solitude should actually be regenerative think about you know when our phones are dead or our phones are on uh you know our, our phone batteries on red we put, we put it on the charger oftentimes and 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 so many times when it's completely dead we'll just put it on the charger and we'll just leave it we won't be sitting there and you know playing with it while it's on the charger a lot of times um, we'll, we'll set it there and we'll go get our other stuff done uh, and by the time we come back you know it may be charged up to a certain point where we can start to use it again and thinking about for ourselves where can we in our life in our day in our week be able to set ourselves on our charger we sometimes we just say oh the you know that's what kind of what sleep is for we just kind of go in uh, and sleep and just knock that out but think about how are we actually sleep are we just sleeping just to sustain our basic level of energy? Are we still on our devices right before we go to sleep? Do we wake up uh, and, and that's kind of right where we jumped out on? Or do we have a moment within that period that we designate for ourselves that we are able to uh, not feel like we're you know just running a race and taking a short breather and then getting back up and running again, but being able to uh, find meaningful moments outside of the sleep, outside of that place there, to be able to genuinely uh, recharge uh, for ourselves. So putting ourselves on the charger, letting ourselves sit here, letting our devices and all the other things maybe sit there and being able to really, truly cultivate that recharge. And thinking about what, when we, when we, when we make that time for ourselves, when we make that time for solitude, it's not just aimless. It's not for any, uh, without any purpose. The uh, purpose of the solitude in order for it to be enhancing, in order for it to be supplemental and beneficial to us in all regards, that must be a time that we take that is primarily in the contemplation of and in the reflection of and in the worship of Allah. And I said this doesn't have to be 
just in the context of salah and in prayer that you take the solitude and that's the only time sometimes just sitting and reflecting sometimes just sitting and thinking deeply and, and some of the things that we'll lift up we'll touch it touch base about what kinds of thoughts we might have in those moments of sol sol solitude but thinking about uh, just those benefits that solitude has to offer us. We lifted up some, but uh, certain studies, I think uh, the University of Reading in UK had lifted up that how spending more hours in solitude was linked with increased feelings of reduced stress, uh, increased calming effects, it, it, a day with more time that incorporated solitude, intentional solitude, related also to feeling more freedom to choose and to be oneself. Uh, but again, on a fine balance, that not all solitude was great, that if that solitude was not by our own agency, if that solitude was something that uh, was going way, way too much into that isol isolative, isolating space, that on days where you would spend more time alone, people would feel uh, reported feeling you know, lonely and less satisfied. And it also highlights that potential effects of social isolation. But everyday solitude in terms of incorporating it in healthy ways and in beneficial ways and modulated and regular ways were seen as being beneficial for our overall well-being and thinking about that uh, in, in terms of when we summarize what are some of those benefits that solitude offers it offers us a moment to get to know ourselves to really be in tune with ourselves, what are we really thinking because we are operating in such a fast-paced space where we're working here we're uh, in a group chat here, we're doing all these different things here, we're getting all these different notifications and alerts and advertisements and whatnot, we sometimes lose our own identity, we sometimes lose on what are we feeling, we see things on the news and we're connected and we see horrific images, we see difficult news and uh, polarizing headlines and whatnot, uh, we, we, we're being, getting ping ponged all over the place here, and so moments of solitude really allowing us that time to say, what, like, what, what, what am I kind of feeling, what, where am I right now? Um, thinking about, again, that aspect of recharging, being able to intentionally, just like our phones, regain our capacity. Also thinking about, as we mentioned earlier, having a space where we can think outside the box, where we can foster our creativity, where we can solve problems, where uh, we can clear our minds a little bit. And this solitude can be taken in so many different spaces within the tradition and within, uh, you know, just, just the, the epoch of human life that you kind of see of how people have taken solitude in so many places not just in the in the uh, the comfort of their homes but out in nature in wilderness um you know in in, in distant spaces and distant lands um, so many different ways shapes and forms to be able to take uh this this aspect of of incorporating solitude and not just thinking that it's, it has to be completely romanticized or has to be completely devoid of any creativity um but it it, it can be a space where we we not only allow for it to be of uh, value, but it's something that ultimately can help us increase and benefit our own mental, mental health uh, to reduce any of these other negative things that might come about because we're engaging in it purposely. And so when we think of it from a spiritual standpoint, what does solitude offer us? Not just uh, being able to have quality, sincere time and sincere worship with Allah. We have that opportunity that sometimes we may miss in a congregational setting uh, where we kind of just feel like we're kind of going through the motions, but we never really feel like we're invested in it for ourselves. We're never really feeling like we are the ones who uh, are taking agency over this practice, but being able to focus some of that time to be like, how, how, how are we doing at our point? How are we doing uh, in terms of our own practice? Are we satisfied with it? Are we dissatisfied with it? Because if we just kind of go along for a lifelong period, just with the crowd, we don't feel like we're gaining anything is it really of any benefit and so this is this is also as i mentioned apart from the uh, benefit of being able to solve our problems uh, in different ways or be creative uh, it's also an opportunity to be able to dive deeper into our own intellect we're in a uh, very uh, you know just quick response type of a society um a a, a very uh, quick response with respect to our needs and satisfactions and other things like that and this is a chance for us to kind of be able to reset our minds to take a break from all of those uh, the different noise that's there but to also unlock some deeper understandings not just about ourselves but about those things that are most meaningful to us our relationships our spirituality and so many different things that come about and 
something in our in, 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 in for us to think about is when we look at these moments of solitude, uh, how do we incorporate them? Where do we incorporate them? What 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 are some of the thoughts? What are some of the things that that come about? Um, and so it invites us to get to know more of our schedule. So often we'll go through our week working a 40, 50, 60 hour week, wondering where most of that week went and not knowing where do we even have time to be able to build this in or telling ourselves, making the excuse, I don't know if I've got enough time to do that, or I don't know if I have time for making that. And when we kind of say that, we really mean that it's not necessarily that we don't have time. When we look at our schedules, we probably actually do have some of that time to just take an intentional 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, even up to an hour, or whatever it might be, to be able to just intentionally disconnect. But it's really saying that it's not a priority right now, that when we say we don't have time, it's almost analogous and, and, and synonymous with saying, don't really have uh that's not the highest priority right now and how do we reframe that for ourselves there's an interesting narration um that i will just briefly run through here uh that was shared by uh, mikdad who was one of the companions of ali and he shared that he went to uh abu huraira and abu huraira had said that he had heard the prophet uh, say that contemplating and reflecting for an hour is better than one year of worship and so then uh, Mikdad had gone to Ibn Abbas, and Ibn Abbas had said that uh, he had heard the Prophet say that contemplating for an hour is superior to seven years of worship. And then Mikdad said that I went to another companion and heard him narrate that the Prophet had said, an hour of contemplation is better than 70 years of worship. And Mikdad, as maybe all of us here, are, were astonished to hear each of them narrating differently from each other but also in the terms of content of that narration, that, wow, that's a, it's very interesting to kind of see that comparison. And so Mikdad then said that I approached the Prophet ﷺ directly and informed him of these different versions. And the Prophet ﷺ responded that all three of them speak the truth. And in order to prove his point, uh, the Prophet ﷺ brought uh, Abu Huraira, had brought the other Sahabi, had brought Ibn Abbas, and they all gathered in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ had asked Abu Huraira, how do you contemplate? And uh, Abu Huraira responded that, as stated by the by Allah in the Quran, that those men, those women who reflect on the creation uh, of the heavens and the earth, that I too reflect on the wonders of the heavens and the earth. And, and he replied that. And the Prophet ﷺ had remarked that one hour of your contemplation is better than one year of worship, as Abu Huraira had uh, told Mikdad. Then he turned to Ibn Abbas, who had said that, who, had, who was asked, how do you contemplate? And Ibn Abbas said that I reflect upon death and I reflect upon uh, the, the fear and the horror um, that, that might be felt on the day of judgment um, and, and, and that last day. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ had said that your one hour of contemplation is indeed better than seven days, seven years of worship. And then he asked his other companion, in what manner do you contemplate? And the companion had answered that I reflect upon uh, the fire. I reflect upon um, the, the hereafter, but I also reflect upon the fire and its dreadfulness and its severity. And, one, and the Prophet ﷺ responded that one hour of your contemplation is better than 70 years of worship as each as his companion had shared to Mikdad. So in this way, Mikdad says that the issue was solved and it became clear that the rewards for contemplation had depended on the intention that accompanied it. And uh, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions that there's four categories of thoughts that we should actively cultivate. And moments of solitude can be enriched by this. It's, it's one thing, again, like we mentioned, that you can have that one time where you take your time and you do something unhealthy and it, it just happens there. And you know you can make a million and one excuses for it, cool. But if it starts to happen over and over and over again, it becomes problematic. And thinking about, for us, our moments of solitude can start off as something that might be a little bit corrosive, but how can they be moments that are very amplified and bring the best type of output, best type of benefit that they can offer us spiritually, emotionally, holistically, relation? And Ibn Al-Qayyim lifted up that uh, when, we, when we're in this space, that four general categories of thought that should actively be cultivated, that can be increasingly cultivated, especially in moments of solitude. One, our most beloved purpose, 
uh, number two, the path that leads to fulfilling its purpose. Number three, the harm that leads to punishment. And four, the paths that lead to this harm. That in terms of in, the, in those four in those four things that were lifted up, and when we think about our most beloved purpose, our most beloved purpose is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we think about, we reflect on Allah's attributes, we reflect on uh, Allah's actions within our life, we think about uh, Allah's blessings that have been bestowed upon us. Um, as Umar ibn Abdulaziz had stated, as we read uh, at the beginning of the khutbah, that it's, it's good to remember Allah, uh, but it's even more beneficial to remember the benefits and the blessings that Allah has conferred, conferred upon us. It's additive in that aspect. That's so when we, the first part that Ibn al-Qayyim lifts up, so thinking about our most beloved purpose, reflecting on Allah, reflecting on the benefits of Allah. Two, reflecting the path that, thinking about the path that leads to fulfilling this purpose, that what are the things that Allah loves? What are the qualities that Allah loves? What are the types of people that Allah loves? How can we refine ourselves, our character, to be these kinds of people. Number three, thinking about our most kind of despised ends, thinking about the harm that leads to punishment, thinking about the the things that uh, are, are are not beloved to Allah, thinking about the things that are negative, that uh, will, would lead to dire consequences, that would lead to um, the things that are rebuked within our tradition, that uh, are, are, are not lifted up, that are punished for in that space, that um, what 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 are not just those things, but what are the harms that they cultivate both in this life and in the next? And and lastly, thinking about the paths that lead to that harm. Um, thinking about not just those qualities that are despised by the beloved, but think about what type of cycle kind of does that perpetuate? What kind of pathways lead to that? What friendships lead to that? What type of work leads to that? What type of character leads to those pathways? And so thinking about in this aspect that. Uh, when 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 you put it all together, that that first category increases a person's love for Allah. That we reflect on Allah, we think about Allah. We have this a beloved sense of Allah and, and a deep connection with Allah. And the relate the remaining categories that are there help make that individual more beloved to Allah. Help make the ease of climbing that ascent, make ease of that journey towards reconnecting with Allah. And so, in a day and age that we live in here. We live in a day in an age that is hyper externally connected with all these different things. We've got our phones, we've got our you know watches, we've got all these different things, we've got our screens, uh, hyper connected in this way. But also, as science has showed us, as sociology, as sociologists have showed us, and psychologists have showed us, it's also a time of hyper internal disconnection, of internal isolation. Uh, of this distancing that that is there, that during COVID we experienced a social distancing, but also this type of internal distancing that is not of a benefit, that is harmful for us, because we as human beings, uh, we can be introverts, we can be extroverts, we have our predispositions, but we are, as Muslims, as human beings, meant to also have genuine, natural, and good connection with our communities, with our loved ones and whatnot. But it doesn't mean we can only just be fully outward social and everything there, or we can just be completely ignorant and, uh, you know, just unaware of what's going on and isolated from the entire world, but to find a balance where we have those roots that we are connected to those who love us, to those whom we love, to the things that we love, but also we intentionally build in these moments of solitude and these practices that give us the time away from ourselves, away from all these other things that might distract us, as was the prophetic practice of our pious predecessors and so thinking about that while we're in this day and age of a hyper internal or hyper external connection coupled with a hyper internal disconnection that let us take that time within our own lives whatever it might look like whatever it may be to kind of evaluate to see where can we make that time to revive this sunnah to revive this prophetic practice of taking moments of solitude times of solitude and time that intentionally allows us to disconnect, but in for a purpose and for a substantive purpose that allows us to ultimately improve our connection with those whom we love and to the one whom we not only serve, but the one whom uh, Ibn al-Qayyim describes as our most beloved purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
you know, in closing, we pray that may Allah allow us to be among those whom Allah calls a people of reason, a people of uh, intellect, the ulil albab, these people whom, uh, when, when, you know, for whom in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alteration of the day and the night, there are signs for the remembrance of Allah. And these are those who remember Allah while standing, while sitting, or lying on their sides. And they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they pray to Allah that our Lord, you have not created any of this without purpose. You have not created this aimlessly or in vain. That glory be to you and protect us from the torment of fire of disobedience. To bring us to a space where we are reconnected with you. So our moments of solitude we take may feel isolated may be defined by an isolated aspect, but their essence, their substance, their benefit is truly in being a, in, in, in a space of fostering and cultivating and regenerating uh, a healthier way of reconnection, both to the world around us, to our loved ones, and most importantly, to our creator. Uh, as we pray in the tradition uh, of our prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, that uh, and as we humbly offer this this service, we humbly remind ourselves of this. This is something applicable to each and every one of us. That may Allah enable this for us to be so and and strengthen us to be able to have that strength to put the device down, to put something on the charger, and to be able to give ourselves a little bit of time to recharge. Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, Thou art all hearing, all knowing. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa jumma mubarak to you.